Good morning. Welcome again to our St. Bernard's Weekly Devotional. I'm Julie with Pastoral Care, and it's my joy to be with you again today. And uh, I actually wanted to talk with you about something I'm processing myself this week, and many of you have much more experience than I do with this. And, uh, and I thought that maybe I could encourage you with some of the things I've learned in the last week and that that might be an, not only an encouragement to you but um, also maybe we can uh, have a discussion on this later and you can give me some pointers that you've experienced but um, I had the privilege this last week of sitting with one of our NOTA patients which if you're not familiar with that that's the no one dies alone program and it was my first time to actually be able to sit with a patient um, that was at the end of life and that uh, didn't have anyone else to sit with and I have to say I didn't know what to expect going into the room which puts me at a disadvantage because I know many of you are dealing with this day in and day out you see this often um, and you could probably give me some pointers but um, one of the things that I noticed as I was sitting there in the room with this person who uh, was not conscious, was not talking, but I knew was still aware somehow um, of what was going on around them. And I, I struggled with how do I care for this person? How do I care for this patient? Um, what am I supposed to do? And I began to pray because I thought, Lord, how do I even pray for this man? when I don't know his story, I don't know what his life has been like. Um, and it was actually very challenging for me. And it was a, it was a little bit of a wake up call, I think, of just my own need to really ponder how do we serve those who are facing end of life. Um, and I know for many of you, especially if you're working in acute care and ICU and surgery, you, you have to wrestle with this often. Um, but for me, it was, it was a new thing. And I began to pray because I felt like I didn't know what else to do. Um, and uh, I felt like Jesus answered me with a question, which was, can you just sit with me for an hour? And I realized that he was pointing me back to the scriptures, to the chapter of, uh, to Mark chapter 14, where Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. So I'm going to read you that passage now, starting in verse 32. So this is, Jesus is on his way to the cross. He knows that his death is approaching and he invites his friends to come with him. And he says, they came to a place named Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here until I have prayed. And he took with him Peter and James and John and he began to be very distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch. He went a little beyond them, and he fell to the ground and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and he found his friend sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away to pray. And so I, I sensed as I was sitting in this room with a man who was very close to death, that Jesus was inviting me to do what he had asked his disciples to do when he was facing death. And that was to just sit with him and to watch, to keep watch and to pray. And that's what I began to do. And it was a Sunday morning. And so I thought we'll have church. And we began, I began to, to sing hymns and to pray, but I just sensed Jesus inviting me to sit for a while. And I have to say, that's difficult for me. Um, I like to be a person of action, and I know that for many of you who are serving in these acute care situations, your job is to be people of action, right? People who step in, who find something new to try, something else to do. But in this situation, it can be hard to just say, is, is sitting with someone enough? And so I wanted to encourage you that when Jesus faced the end of his own life, 
he asked his friends to sit with him. So when you have those, those heartbreaking situations where you feel like, well, there must be more that we could do, or what if, what if there was more I could have done or should have done, or when you feel that, that pull of that, that helpless feeling of there's nothing more I can do, that actually you can think about how Jesus in his final hours simply wanted someone to be there with him. He didn't want to be alone. And that every time you go into the room, you are bringing the presence of Christ with you. Every time that you say the patient's name so that they know that, that someone hears them and someone knows them, and someone is taking the time to, to just be with them for a while, that that's enough, that that's often enough. I tend to be a lot more like Peter, I think, which in this situation, he, he had trouble sitting still for an hour, which I relate to very much. But then later on in the passage, when Jesus is actually being arrested, he yanks out a sword and tries to cut off the guard's head and the guard ducks and he ends up getting his ear. And Jesus just shakes his head, he's like, Peter. And he heals the guard's ear and he's like, this is not what I asked you to do. I didn't ask you to fight for me. I asked you to sit with me, to stay with me, to be with me while I face this trial. And I relate a lot more to Peter. I can think of, of standing by the bedside and saying, God, if you want this guy to get up and walk out of his bed, I'll pray for it. I'll do it. Let's, let's take action. I believe in miracles. I believe that you do these kinds of things. And I was ready to try to pray something big because it felt like that way I was doing something. And Jesus just like with Peter said, oh, Julie, just, just stay with me for a while. Stay with him for a while. But what I also thought about as I was thinking through how we can respond and be friends to our patients the way that, that Christ asked his friends to be with him was that also maybe you're facing your own valley of the shadow of death. Or maybe you're facing just valleys that are shadowy in general. And maybe you are afraid of entering those valleys alone. And I want to encourage you as well that when you face your own valleys, when you face your own shadows, that that same Jesus who asked his friends to walk with him and sit with him and pray with him, not only did he die on the cross, but through His resurrection, He conquered not only death, but every kind of shadow. And so He is well equipped and able to walk with you through your own valleys. You are not alone because He knows the value of sitting with someone in their pain and suffering. He knows the value of sitting with you and walking with you through those valleys. He doesn't send you through them alone. But not only that, not only is He present with you, but you have a team of people that He has called to sit with you as well, to represent Him, to bring His presence in a tangible way to you when you are facing a valley, when you don't know what's coming next, or when it does seem dark ahead. The pastoral care team would love to sit with you. It's a privilege and an honor for us to be able to serve you. So if you are facing that, especially for those of you who may genuinely be contemplating dying, contemplating suffering that you see in your future, not knowing if there's a way out, please reach out to the pastoral care team. Catch one of us in the hall, come to the office here by the chapel, and let us sit with you because it is a joy for us to be able to do that with you. We want to be able to serve you in this way. So not only are we encouraged to sum up, are we encouraged to sit with those who are suffering and know that our presence is a gift to them. It's what Jesus is asking us to do. Do you pause a little bit? Do you say their name so they know that, that someone knows who they are? Do you stay a little extra and do some charts in their room so that they can know that someone's with them? That's wonderful. That's, that's fulfilling what Jesus wanted his friends to do for him. But also when you're facing your own valleys and your own shadows, you can also follow what Jesus did by asking friends to sit with you. 
They may not do it perfectly, but you'll know that you're not alone. And we invite you to ask us as well, to, to use us for that, for your own journey, that we can walk through those valleys together. Jesus knew what it was like to want the cups to pass from him, the cup of suffering. And he knew what it was like to ask for help in those times. And he encourages us to do the same. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you were not too proud or too haughty or too uh, afraid to ask for help, to ask for someone to come alongside you and, and sit with you in your suffering so that we know that we have permission to do the same. We know that it's okay to ask for help. And not only that, but it's what you want us to do. You want us to have people who sit with us and keep watch with us so that we can pray and so that we can struggle and not think that we're alone. We thank you that not only did you give us the example of asking for the cup to pass from you, asking for it to go away, but also trusting that if it doesn't, you will not be alone. The Father will take care of you. And so we can trust in the same way. And most of all, we praise you and thank you that you didn't end in death. Your life didn't end in death, but you rose again. And through your resurrection, you have wiped away every shadow. You have wiped away every shadow and you stand alive and ready and willing to walk through valleys with us. We thank you for the comfort that that brings. And we ask that you would give us eyes to see one another, to see those around us who might be experiencing that loneliness of the shadows and that we would have the courage and the faith to just sit with them, not to feel the pressure that we have to fix it, but just to sit and to keep watch with them for a little while. We thank you so much for your love for us and it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.